Good day, students. Um, on this group, we're going to be going over uh, how to derive the Fibonacci sequence from uh, the golden ratio. Basically, you're going to see the connection between the golden ratio and, and the Fibonacci sequence, all right? So, let's start off by writing out what the, um, the Fibonacci sequence is. The Fibonacci sequence is a fixed sequence defined by F sub N equals um, F sub N minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2, okay? So that's basically uh, what the Fibonacci uh, sequence is. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to start out by look, taking a look at the um, golden ratio and then see if we can derive this Fibonacci sequence from, from the, golden, the golden ratio, all right? So this just a real quick review on the golden ratio. I did a much more um, detailed derivation in my other video. You can take a look at that on notconserve.com. But the whole idea of a golden ratio is basically if you have a length, a segment, um, and you divide it in a special way, you have uh, the golden ratio. So let's say we, I break up this segment like this, and the entire length, if the entire length is um, A plus B, because I partitioned this uh, uh, segment using this side, this portion as A, and this portion as B. Um, the golden ratio basically says that um, if this one is, if this segment, this segment I have here is partitioned um, in such a way that the ratio of the whole thing to the, to the longer of the two segments, if it is E, I'm sorry, over A, if it is equal to um, the ratio of the longer of the two, which is A, over B. If this relationship holds, then this ratio is basically equal to the golden ratio, which is B. And that's basically um, 1 plus root 5 over 2. Alright? So how on earth did this come about? Just a real quick uh, recap on, on why this is the case. Um, if, I, if I break this segment, um, let's say the entire segment is... Um, is x units long, okay? Um, I make the entire segment x units long. Like this, I see the old thing with x unit long, and I partition it in such a way that this piece is one unit long, and this piece has to be the whole thing minus one, which is x minus one. If I set it up using the golden ratio, I'm gonna end up with the expression x which is a whole thing like a plus b over the shortest of the over the longer of the two segments, which is one, will be equal to the longer of the two segments, which is one, divided by x minus one. All right. When I cross multiply, I'm going to end up with x times x minus one equals one, and when I distribute, I'll have x squared minus x equals one. All right. If I put this uh, quadratic equation in standard form, I'll end up with x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0 because I just minus 1 from both sides, right? And I end up with this quadratic equation. There are different ways I can solve this quadratic equation. If I uh, apply the quadratic formula, I'm going to end up with the solution um, 1 plus or minus the square root of, if I do b squared minus 4ac, I'll end up with 5 here over 2. Okay, so you know what the quadratic formula is, right? Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, and in this case I'm using b equals negative 1, um, c equals negative 1, and I'm using a equals uh, 1. Alright, so if you plug all this in there and simplify, you end up with, with this, uh, this, this number. Okay? There are two roots. We have the uh, golden ratio. This is the first root, golden ratio, uh, which is C, and that is basically 1 plus root 5 over 2. And then you have the other root, which is known as the conjugate of the golden ratio. Uh, con uh, let's write it as golden ratio conjugate. Um, golden ratio conjugate. That one is the other solution. Um, that one is upper uppercase uh, phi, which is written like this, and that is equal to 1 minus root 5 over 2. Okay? 
This is also known as the silver ratio. So people call it the silver ratio. Okay. Um, so. All right. So um, basically, how can this number, the golden ratio and its conjugate, the silver ratio, uh, how are they connected to the Fibonacci uh, sequence? So that's what we're going to be uh, deriving um, in this in this video. All right. So so let's start with the original equation. This equation right here x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. We know that um, b and its conjugate and this, they both satisfy, they satisfy this equation. Okay? Let me call this uh, equation 1. Okay? They satisfy equation 1. Now, what if I do some algebra here? What if I move, um, I move this one over? I mean, I move one and x plus one over to the right. So I just simply, um, I simply do some algebra here. Add x, add one to both sides. Add x and add one. Just transform this equation by isolating x squared. So I'll have x squared equals x plus one. Since uh, let me call this. This is equation one. Let me call this. Uh, let me call this equation two. Okay, this is equation one. So these two equations are the same, right? So since um, the golden ratio and the silver ratio will both satisfy equation one, and this is another variation of equation one, it follows that these two numbers, these two roots, also satisfy this formulation, right? So um, phi, the golden ratio and the silver ratio, uppercase uh, phi, also satisfy also satisfy um, uh, equation two, right? All right, so now what I'm gonna tell you is I'm gonna tell you that um, this, the, this uh, phi also satisfies the equation, the equation um, x to the n equals x to the n, x to the n um, minus one plus, x to the n minus 2. Okay, so let's call this equation equation 3. All right, so my claim is these two roots right here, these two values right here, they satisfy this equation also. How on earth do I know that um, that this two numbers satisfy this equation? Well, it's simple. If I multiply this equation by x to the n minus, n, uh, minus 2, I'm going to end up with this equation right here, okay? Another way to do it is, if I simplify this equation, you just see that this equation is simply a multiple of that equation, okay? So, um, how how do I know that this equation is a, is a multiple of that equation? I'm gonna do some algebraic manipulations here, um, just to show you. So what I'm going to do is, uh, from the left side, I'm gonna factor out x, I'm gonna factor out x squared from this, and I'm gonna factor out x from this, and I'm going to factor out um, x to the n minus 2 from this one right here, okay? So if I factor out x squared from this term right here, I'm going to have, um, this one is going to become x squared, and I'm going to left with x to the n minus 2. And then if I factor out x from here, I'm going to have x times x to the n minus 2 because this is x and 1 I factored out, plus, and if I factor out 1 from here, I'll be left with x to the n minus 2, okay? So if you notice that if I distribute this x squared times x to the n minus 2, what am I going to get? I'm going to get x to the n because I'm going to have 2 plus n minus 2, which is just n, because these two terms cancel out. And if I factor, if I multiply this by this, I'll just end up with, um, I'll end up with x to the n minus 2 plus 1, so just x to the n minus 1. So this is simply that. And if I distribute this, you just have x to the n minus 2. All right? So what you notice here is that if I, when I factor out x squared from this, I had this left. When I factor out x from this, I had x this left. And then when I factor out x 1 from this, I had that left. And if you look at it, you, you're going to notice that if I have x squared, I'm going to have x squared times x to the n minus 2 equals, since x to the n minus 2 is common on both sides, I'll have x to the n minus 2 
times x plus 1. And if I divide both sides by x to the n minus 2, what do I end up with? If I divide these by x to the n minus 2, and divide these by x to the n minus 2, this and this cancel out, you end up with the original equation. So you end up with x squared equals x plus 1. So you see that this equation right here is just a multiple of this. If I multiply this equation by x to the n minus 2, I'll end up with this equation right here. All right. So what I'm saying in essence is, um, since this is a multiple of that, these two also satisfy equation 3. Okay, so uh, the golden ratio P and uh, the uppercase P, which is a silver ratio, also satisfy satisfy um, equation 3. Alright? Alright, so there you have it. Um, so... Another easy way to, to look at it is if I multiply this by x to the n minus 2 every single one, I'll end up with this equation equation right here. So basically, if I multiply the left side by um, x to the n minus 2, and then I multiply this one by x to the n minus 2, when I do all the algebra, this one is gonna, simply going to become x to the n equals x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2. Okay? So the bottom line is this equation right here is satisfied this to satisfy um, this equation right here okay so let's keep that in mind now what I'm going to do I'm going to proceed to make uh, a definition now what if I wanted to plug in these solutions into this equation so I'm going to write this equation down here the equation I'm using is basically um, x to the n equals x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2. Since p and um, since the golden ratio, p and and the silver ratio, p uppercase, since they both satisfy um, this equation, that means that when I plug in these two values into this equation, it will also hold, through, hold true. Okay? So it follows that. Follows that. Since these two satisfy this equation, I can also say p. The golden ratio uh, to the n equals d to the n minus 1 plus d to the n minus 2. Okay, and also the silver ratio, since it's the other root or the conjugate of the golden ratio, uppercase p to the n is also equal to e, sorry, part of my writing, e to the n minus 1 plus uh, p to the n minus 2. Okay, so these two uh, equations also hold true. They also hold true because um, because these two values right here basically satisfy um, this original equation. All right, so this is P right here. Okay, so these two equations hold. Now, um, what I'm going to proceed to do, I'm going to create um, create a, a, a series. What if I define a series as follows? Let me say this. Um, uh, recursive definition f to the n f to the n um, equals a series is generated using this recursive definition x to the n equals a times um, the golden ratio lowercase p um, to the n plus b times the silver ratio or the golden ratio conjugate uppercase p to the n Okay, let's let's just define this. Okay, I'm um, using this definition. If I make a substitution of these two into this equation, what happens? Basically, I take this piece and substitute it with that. Take this and substitute it with that. We're going to end up with this relationship: f to the n equals um, a. So instead of p, uh, go the golden ratio, lowercase p to the n. I replace it with its value right here. So it's going to be um, p. So the n minus 1 plus lowercase p, the golden ratio, to the n minus 2, n plus b. Now I'm going to substitute the silver ratio, the golden ratio conjugate with its value here. So it's going to be um, uppercase p to the n minus 1 plus uppercase p uh, to the n minus 2. Okay? So uh, what happens here if I, if I uh, do some... 
substitution if I if I if I um distribute this out okay if I distribute this out what what am I going to to end up with so let's let's do some algebra here all right so what I'm gonna have are uh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna distribute a to this term right here and then to that term and I'm really going to distribute b to this term right here and to that term okay so that's gonna give us um f to the n equals a times the golden ratio lowercase b to the n minus 1 plus a times the golden ratio lowercase b to the n minus 2 and plus b times the silver ratio uppercase b to the n minus 1 plus b times the silver ratio uppercase uh, b to the n minus 2 okay so let's uh, combine the like ter terms with the same degree. So this is f to the n is going to become um, a times the golden ratio of b to the n minus 1 plus um, b times the silver ratio, uppercase b, to the n minus 1 plus a times the golden ratio of b, lowercase b to the n minus 1 plus b times the silver ratio uppercase of p to the n minus 2. Okay? So if you take a look at this definition right here, and this definition is very similar to this right here. Okay? So what I'm saying right here is if you take a look at this, the only difference between this equation and that equation is that n plus n is being replaced with n minus 1 right here. Okay? So basically this piece right here is f to the n minus 1 and um, this piece right here, okay, I think I made a mistake. So this is supposed to be, uh, I had this one. This goes down here, that goes here. Oh, this is two right here. All right, so you see the powers right here? This power, this power right here determines what it is. So basically, um, I'm going to make a substitution here. So um, just to make it more obvious, I'm going to call it coded. Okay, I'm just rewriting this using color. So f sub n equals a... Uh, lowercase b to the, let me put it in um, red so you see what's going on here. So to the n minus 1, I'm just writing the same thing, but I'm color coding it so you see exactly what's going on. Plus b, uh, uppercase b, the silver ratio to the um, n minus 1. And then plus a times uh, lowercase b, the golden ratio to the n minus 2. n minus 2 plus b times uh, the zero ratio uppercase b to the uh, n minus 2. Okay? You see this power right here? These two powers not. You have a and lowercase b and b and lowercase b. You see that right here? So this piece right here is f to the n minus 1. And this right here is f to the n minus 2. So by substitution, we're going to have, this is going to become, oh, wrong color. Um, this one is going to become uh, f n equals becomes f to the since the power is here n minus 1 is going to be f to the n minus 1 plus and then these two right here are going to have f to the n minus 2 okay this is based on we're using the definition that we used um, earlier to to arrive at this result okay so what we just have to do here um, if 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 a and b are chosen are chosen uh, so that so that f sub zero equals um, zero and f sub one equals one then then the sequence then the sequence sequence f sub n um, must be must be the Fibonacci sequence. Okay? Fibonacci sequence. So this is a really amazing result to see how these two amazing numbers are are connected to each other. Alright, thanks so much for uh, watching this video. Um, Please feel free to subscribe to my videos on 
uh, feel free to record videos also. You can find a collection of my clips at markgoodsurf.com or you can just Google markgoodsurf. Okay? Have a wonderful day.